sodium ion and potassium ion are one of the most important ions which is there in our blood or it is there in our system or in our body hydration enthalpy is higher than that of the alkali metals and we can find that these are extensively hydrated hello my dear students welcome back to the session 4 on the chapter s block elements last class we studied about the diagonal relationship between lithium and magnesium also we learned about sodium carbonate that is washing soda they are manufactured by solvay's process which i told it's very important and we also learned its uses we learned about the sodium chloride again preparation and uses also sodium hydroxide how is it manufactured by kastner kellner process also its uses and some of the properties isn't it today we learn about the biological importance of sodium and potassium and also we'll start with group 2 elements okay first we learn about the biological importance of sodium and potassium sodium ions and potassium ions are one of the most important ions which is there in our body or it is there in our cells as well as there in our blood also so sodium ions are most important for transmission of nerve signals properly so if we are deficient in sodium ions the nerve signals will not be transmitted well also sodium ions are responsible for flow or regulating the flow of water across the cell membrane also they transport sugar and amino acids into the cell as they differ quantitatively they penetrate into the cell or out of the cell through a transport system called as sodium potassium pump and that is very very important as the amount of sodium and potassium which is there in the blood as well as in the cells makes a lot of difference in activating the enzymes or it may be the flow of water across the membranes or it may be transport of food that is the sugar and amino acids into the cells etc also sodium ions are most abundant cations which is there in the cell fluids as they activate many enzymes and also potassium participates in oxidation of glucose to produce atp which is called as the currency of the cells isn't it thus the blood plasma if you see sodium is present in 143 millimoles as well as potassium is present only in 5 millimoles so in blood plasma you can see sodium level is higher and potassium level is lower isn't it so these two sodium and potassium ions should be balanced really well in our body for normal functioning of our body okay next we'll be learning about group 2 metals or alkaline earth metals group 2 elements consist of beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium there are six elements which is there in group 2 and they are called as alkaline earth metals why are they called as alkaline earth metals except beryllium only the others are called as alkaline earth metals because the oxides are alkaline and occur in earth's crust that's the reason they are called as alkaline earth metals next we'll be learning about their physical properties under physical properties first is the electronic configuration if you see beryllium symbol is be electronic configuration is helium 2s2 then we have magnesium which is neon 3s2 then we have calcium argon 4s2 strontium krypton 5s2 barium xenon 6s2 and radon 7s2 
So as we come down the group, the number of shells are going on increasing, isn't it? Here it is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the number of shells are increasing. What happens to the atomic size? It goes on increasing. And you can see that they have a completely filled S orbital. So it is a little difficult to remove the electrons. But if two electrons are lost, then it gets the noble gas configuration. So next, we'll be learning about the size as well as the ionization enthalpy. So coming to atomic radii or ionic radii, what exactly happens as we come down the group? What do we have? Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium. As we come down the group, imagine as we come down the group. Okay, so as we come down the group, the atomic size is going on increasing. What about the ionic radii? Even the ionic radii as we come down the group goes on increasing. But compared to group 1 elements, what about their ionic or atomic radii? Group 1 elements we have, then we have group 2 elements. Compared to 1 and 2, the group 2 elements have smaller size that is it decreases not only the atomic radii decreases even the ionic radii decreases because most of these elements or all the elements exist in m plus 2 state they have lost two electrons the effective nuclear charge increases and the ionic radii also is smaller okay thus as we come down the group what is happening the atomic radius is increasing and along the period compared to group 1 what is happening the atomic radius is lesser compared to the group 1 element okay so that's about atomic and ionic radii next is ionization enthalpy as we come down the group as the atomic size increases as we come down the group, what is increasing? Atomic radii or size is increasing due to which the ionization enthalpy will decrease. As the atom is becoming bigger, it is easy for us to lose electron. But compared to the first group, their ionization enthalpy is higher because compared to, for example, we have next to this, what do we have? We have lithium, sodium potassium, rubidium, cesium, etc. So, if we compare sodium and magnesium, magnesium is having the higher ionization enthalpy. Calcium is having higher ionization enthalpy. Why? Because the size is smaller and the number of electrons and protons are also bigger. It's more, isn't it? Thus, effective nuclear charge also is increased. Thus, it has got a higher ionization enthalpy compared to the first group elements. But as we come down the group, what is happening? The ionization enthalpy is decreasing. And when I am talking about the ionization enthalpy, it is the first ionization enthalpy what I am talking about, not the second or the third. Okay. Next is about the hydration enthalpies or hydration energy. Hydration enthalpy is higher than that of the alkali metals and we can find that these are extensively hydrated. We can see that magnesium chloride or calcium chloride exists as magnesium chloride with 6 molecules of water and calcium chloride also with 6 molecules of water. So they are extensively hydrated because they have a larger hydration enthalpy. Also you can see that as the size of the ions are going on increasing, the hydration energies of M plus 2 decreases. You can see it is decreasing as we go down the group because they are increase in atomic size. Also, higher value of hydration enthalpy or heat of hydration is the main reason for all of this, all of these ions to exist in plus 2 state that is they are responsible for divalent nature of these metals. Okay. So next property is about flame coloration. We have beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, 
barium okay the last one i am not writing because it's radioactive okay so among this the first two elements do not show any color in the flame that is because they are small atoms and the electrons need a lot of energy to get excited and go to the higher energy level due to this reason they do not show any color to the flame it is only calcium strontium and barium calcium will show brick red color strontium will show crimson red color barium will show apple green color to the flame so thus the salts of calcium strontium and barium has different colors to the flame and you are doing all of these tests in your lab in both first puc as well as in your second puc okay then you can observe the colors which it imparts to the flame next is about the chemical properties first reaction is reaction with air all of these alkaline earth metals are less reactive compared to that of alkali metals they do not react vigorously when it is exposed to air they get slowly oxidized when it get when it is exposed to air and they form ionic oxides as well as nitrites when it is burnt with air so you can see metal with oxygen it forms metal oxide all metals will give metal oxide also with nitrogen it can give metal nitrides and m can be beryllium magnesium or calcium not barium and strontium okay last metal with oxygen when it is in excess it can form peroxides but only as we go down the group the formation of peroxides increases that is you can see strontium barium and radium will give peroxides but not the first three elements okay so as we go down the group the tendency to form peroxides also increases so that's about the reaction with air next is reaction with halogens so how exactly alkaline earth metals react with halogen you can see in this table beryllium with halogen at high temperature when it is heated will form beryllium halide magnesium also will form magnesium halide calcium will form calcium halide strontium and barium also will form halides but then you can see the property of the halide beryllium halide is covalent the solubility of the halide decreases as we come down the group so what is happening it becomes less and less soluble as we go down the group okay also you can see they do not conduct electricity that is the beryllium halide but the rest if you see magnesium calcium strontium and barium halide they are all ionic and thus they conduct electricity okay so that's about the halides now if you see the halogen fluorides are almost insoluble in water and the fluorides are most stable followed by chlorine bromine and iodides which it is formed okay so that's about the reaction with halogen next is reaction with hydrogen beryllium except beryllium all the other alkaline metals react with hydrogen to form hydrides mh2 except beryllium but beryllium hydride do exist but it is not prepared directly by reaction with hydrogen okay so you can see beryllium and magnesium hydrides are the only ones which is covalent rest all are ionic hydrides how is beryllium hydride obtained we take beryllium chloride treat it with lithium aluminum hydride it undergoes reduction to give beryllium hydride lithium chloride and aluminum chloride so what we are doing we are taking beryllium chloride treating it with lithium aluminum hydride to get beryllium hydride direct reaction is not possible but beryllium hydride do exist okay next is reaction towards acids so these alkaline earth metals react with acids to form chlorides and liberate hydrogen gas that is if you take a piece of magnesium and add into dilute hcl they will liberate hydrogen gas to form magnesium chloride so they react with dilute acids to liberate what hydrogen gas 
Next is about reducing nature. Alkaline earth metals have two electrons outside the noble gas configuration. So if they lose those two electrons, they do get a noble gas configuration and they have a low ionization enthalpy that is both the electrons can be lost. Thus, they have a reducing nature because they can lose electrons or they can undergo oxidation, isn't it? Next is about the solution in liquid ammonia. What happens or the solubility in liquid ammonia? So, alkaline earth metals are soluble just like alkali earth metals in liquid ammonia to form a colored solution. So, when metal ammonia solution are evaporated, we get hexa ammoniates that is metal with 6 ammonia as the ligand that is the coordination complex. Such compounds are called as complex compounds. More about this you will be studying in your second year. Okay. So, you have one metal with 6 NH3 molecules around it and the metal is in plus 2 state. Okay. That is all you need to understand. We call it as hexa ammoniates. What happens is metal will lose electron and the metal cation also will react with ammonia to form a ammoniated cation and the electron which is lost also will combine with ammonia to form ammoniated electron and thus as there are ions they are good conductors of electricity and they decompose at a very high temperature okay so that's about the solubility of alkaline metals in liquid ammonia Next class, we will be learning about uses of alkaline earth metals, general characteristics of alkaline earth metal compounds. Also, we will be learning about anomalous behavior of beryllium. Okay. So, I hope you have understood today's class. Thank you, my dear children. Stay tuned, stay focused, stay curious.